Grace, could you just very briefly translate what others said there? Good morning. Thank you very much. Um, the leather naturally concept grew in 2008 during the fairs here in Shanghai and in Hong Kong, APLF and Fashion Access and here, when we were looking at both uh, sustainability and at the forecasting of trends in our industry. And a large number of people began to realize that what we had been trying to achieve and seeing in milk, in cotton and in wool, in global campaigns over previous decades and always failing to achieve in the leather industry was now becoming a necessity. Um, leather was no longer a required material in articles, it was a consumer option and it is now having to defend its place uh, against plastic materials, against high quality technical textiles that did not exist 30 and 40 years ago. And that uh, the tanning industry, the chemical industry that supply it, the footwear manufacturers that depend on it, the meat packers who rely on it, um, cannot any longer assume that produce a nice piece of leather and the shoe, the leather goods, the automobile industry will consume it and the consumer will buy it. And that furthermore, with problems and uh, attacks on the industry coming from bodies like Greenpeace and from PETA, which the industry has chosen over the years not to defend and never to be proactive in uh, defending and promoting the quality and the value of leather, that these attacks were getting more severe and were particularly impacting on Generation Y and the Millennium Generation. The leather industry does exceedingly well in the developed world and other parts of the world from the boomer generation who understand leather and know its natural value. The X generation is a small generation, but the Y generation is our future, and especially the Y generation in the developing world, which is rapidly urbanizing and where young people are losing the contact with agriculture and the understanding that milk and leather come from cows and cattle. Milk, they think, comes from supermarkets. And we have an educational job to do. Now these sort of genetic campaigns are expensive and they're difficult and our institutions, particularly our global institutions in the leather industry, have had a difficult time over the last 15 years. So putting such a campaign together will be a complex and difficult exercise and as Michael Ducker said, we are only at the beginning of such a program. But we've had a number of exciting meetings and the reason that we are here is that many very important and significant members of the trade at the meatpacker, chemical, especially the tanning and at the brands level are interested to see something happen to educate designers, retailers, and new consumers in the value and the importance of leather as an elegant, technical, sustainable material that the world values and the world needs. And this has driven us forward to this stage. And we've had a couple of meetings in the last few days, particularly one last night, from which we're absorbing the results. How we will go forward at this stage, we're not quite sure. But we do seem to have a feeling that there will be moves at least in two or three different areas. Market research, the carbon footprint of the leather industry, and a promotional and educational campaign which will probably have a very strong digital and social media bias. 
we have many enthusiastic supporters. The task ahead is to combine them together to be inclusive and to promote leather as a premium quality material to a new generation of consumers. Thank you.